Today, I want to show you how you can stop Windows 11 from spying on you. Windows 11 just recently came out as a free upgrade. And one thing that you might not have known is that Windows 11 talks back to Microsoft and shares data with how you're using your PC. So how do I know this? Well, I used to work at Microsoft and I saw this data come in firsthand. For example, Microsoft knows the exact GPS coordinates of your PC, the apps that you launch, and even the websites that you visit. And let's be honest, I'm sure many of us would not be proud having that list publicized. They even know the music that you play and the videos that you watch. Now, before I scare you too much, the good news is, is that Microsoft believes you should have control over your data at least most of your data. And Microsoft uses all of this data that it collects to make its products and services better. For example, with Windows 11 that just recently came out, there was an issue with AMD processors where they weren't performing as well as they should. And Microsoft used all of this collected data to identify the issue and then fix it. When I worked on office.com, if we moved a button to a new location and people couldn't find it, well, we used data to identify that and then we fixed it. So by letting Microsoft collect some of this data, you get a better computing experience. But at the same time, you might not care for that and maybe you don't wanna share any data back. In this video, we'll look at what data Microsoft even collects from you and we'll also look at how you can opt out if you would prefer not to share that data back with Microsoft. Microsoft offers two different tools that show you everything that's tracked about you. The first one is called the Privacy Dashboard, and you can access it right up above. The first time that I logged into the Privacy Dashboard, I was a little bit surprised about how much was tracked about me. Here, for example, I could see my PC's location. I could look at my browsing history, I could look at all of the media that I consumed, and I could even see the ads that interest me. I don't even know what ads would interest me, but Microsoft seemed to know. Now, the good news is not only can I view all of this information, but if I wanna clear it, I can very easily do that. And when I clear it, it'll remove all of this information from Microsoft's servers. The second way that you can see what's shared with Microsoft is by using a tool called the Diagnostic Data Viewer. To access this, within Settings, click on Privacy and Security, and then click on the Diagnostic Data Viewer. You can turn it on so your PC also keeps all of the data that's shared back with Microsoft. Right down below, you can also get the Diagnostic Data Viewer. If you don't have it yet, you'll have to download it through the store. Once you download the tool, you can see all of the different telemetry and data that's shared back with Microsoft. You might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of information that's shared back with Microsoft. And maybe you're not completely comfortable sharing all of that information back. Next, we're going to look at ways that you can limit how much data is shared with Microsoft. First, I'd recommend setting up a local account. And what is a local account? Well, everything will be stored locally on your computer. So the apps that you launch, the websites that you visit, all of your files will just be on your computer. If you value your privacy, this may be a very good option. Of course, it does come with a few downsides. You lose access to the various Microsoft services. For example, you won't be able to sync with OneDrive. If you log on another computer, you won't find your files and your settings synced. Also, you won't have access to the Microsoft Store. So you'll have to make a call on whether these downsides are worth the trade-off. To set this up, go into Settings, click on Accounts, your info, and then use local account instead. Next, we're going to look at how you can specify what exact data is shared back with Microsoft. And to do that, let's go into settings and then click on privacy and security. Here, we're going to start at the top of the list and we're going to work our way down. First, let's click on Windows security. 
and here click on Virus and Threat Protection. There are two separate toggles. One of them is for cloud delivered protection and automatic sample submission. With both of these, your PC shares data back with Microsoft. And in return, Microsoft will tell you if you're visiting a malicious website or if you're trying to open a malicious file. But if you don't care for that type of assistance, you can turn both of these off. Back in privacy and security, the next option is for find my device. And the obvious benefit of this is if you lose your device, you'll be able to go into the privacy dashboard and you can see exactly where it is. But if you don't care for that, you can also turn it off. Back on privacy and security. Next, let's click on general. And here the first option is personalized ads. When you visit websites like outlook.com or Bing or MSN, you'll see ads that are tailored to your interests. If you turn this off, you'll continue to see ads, but they just won't be targeted to your interests. Below that, you'll see language list. And here, Windows will share your preferred language with websites. And the benefit here is that you'll see the content on a website in your preferred language. Last, you'll see an option for start and search. And here, Windows can personalize your start menu and search results based on the apps that you use most often. But to do this, it relies on a service and you have to share data back with Microsoft. Under that, you'll also have the option to turn on or off online speech suggestions and also to customize your inking and typing experience. To use both of these, it'll share data with an online service and you'll get better suggestions as a result. But once again, you can turn that off if you don't want to share data back. Next up, let's click into the category titled Diagnostics and Feedback. And within here at the very top, you'll notice that there's a category called required data. And there's no way to opt out of this. Your PC will send some data back to Microsoft. For example, what type of CPU do you have? How is your computer running? What security updates do you need? It does not contain any personal information. And this is purely to make sure that your computer continues to run smoothly. Down below, there's something called optional diagnostic data. This contains information like the apps you launch, the websites that you visit, and you can opt out of this if you want. Microsoft will use this data to make improvements to the product. For example, the apps you launch, that could influence what types of changes they make to the way the taskbar works. With both of these, once again, you can use the Diagnostic Data Viewer to see what type of information is shared back with Microsoft. Down at the bottom, there are also some additional options, one of them for sharing inking and typing data back with Microsoft and also tailored experiences. You can take a look at these to see if you're comfortable sharing that data back with Microsoft. Down at the very bottom of Privacy and Security, you'll see a category for App Permissions. And here you can define what should have access to, let's say your location, your camera, your microphone, and so forth. Here you can see the list of all of the different options. When I click into location, I could decide should Windows have access to my location. And here I can see all of the different apps on my PC that currently have access to my location. And here I could revoke access or I could grant access to my location. You can go through all of these other categories and you can decide what the PC should or should not have access to. Next, we're going to shift categories. On the left-hand side, click on network and internet. Next, click on Wi-Fi. And at the very bottom, you have the option to randomize your hardware address. When you search for Wi-Fi signals, it'll share your physical hardware address or your Mac address. And people can use this to track you. If you randomize it, it makes it harder to track your activity. Those are all of the different ways that you can limit what's shared back with Microsoft from directly within Windows. But there are also third-party tools that you can use to ensure your privacy. Perhaps the most private web browser, you can use the Brave browser. You could find a link right up above. Also, you can download a tool for $10 made by SpyBot called Anti-Beacon. And with just one click, 
you can turn off all data sharing with Microsoft, including required diagnostic information. To get that tool, you can find a link right up above. That was a quick overview of all of the different ways that you can gain control over your data and also limit what is shared. Now, at least for me personally, I've decided to share my data with Microsoft. I used to work at Microsoft and I saw firsthand how that data was used to improve experiences. However, it's your call. And now you have all the tools you need to decide what you're comfortable with sharing. To watch more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.